So now that we introduced the topic of continuous integration, continuous deployment and the outline, let's go a bit more in depth on these two concepts, so on continuous integration and continuous deployment. Uh, especially continuous integration should nowadays be state of the art, state of practice. We are continuously pushing several times per day, automated tests are run and uh, ideally there's some kind of build that you could even deploy maybe. But uh, what you need to get started there is first of all automated tests. So that's the absolute uh, minimum. So without automated tests you can't regularly test the system in an automated fashion. So you need to be rather disciplined on, uh, disciplined on writing unit tests uh, that can be aut uh, automated and push them uh, in a regular manner. Now. To do this regularly and to not break other people's code, you usually also need to be quite disciplined about actual unit testing, that you don't test the entire system, because then uh, if someone else changes something, it's very likely that things might break in between. So uh, this is something you'll need to start off with. Then you need the actual product, the actual solution that does the continuous integration, so some kind of software uh, system that is capable of realizing whenever someone pushes new code, is able to build it, is able to test it, and then somehow publish the results. There are, uh, in, this started with tools like Jenkins, Cruise Control, uh, there were others, so solutions that you, had to, uh, that you had to build yourself and run on your own server. Now there are uh, services that you can use online, for example, Travis CI is one of them, but also uh, repositories like GitLab or even GitHub are offering this nowadays. So it's not that complicated anymore to set up these kind of uh, CI solutions. It used to be much, much harder. All of them have in common that you usually have, for each project you have to have some kind of configuration management uh, of what are the dependencies, how do you build it, how do you test it. So you somehow need to tell the tool what it should do and how it does it. Uh, nowadays these often look like these kind of pipelines, so you have something coming in, it usually starts with the repository, and then you have a number of tasks that happen after each other. For example, you clean up uh, directories where you're going to do the build, you check out the code from the repository, you install the dependencies, you build, you test, you publish the results, and you clean up, for example. So very often they, they look uh, similar. Now, one thing you need, and I've already mentioned it for the tests, is some kind of discipline in your process. So uh, it needs to be clear that automated tests need to be in place, everything needs to be tested, often maybe in a test-driven development fashion. Uh, you need to follow a certain Git or other revision management uh, tool and a specific way of using that. So there are, for example, uh, certain branching systems like Git flow in, in Git that you can use uh, so that you can tell your CI solution what exactly should be built. So that a single, if you change something as a developer you don't break everything but maybe there is a certain rule that whenever the feature that you are developing is complete you are going to push it onto the main, uh, main or master branch. Otherwise you're working on your own feature branch. So there are specific models for uh, how you do them. I'll just mention Git flow here but uh, there are a number of them. So if your company is not using any of those, it's just working in a, in a undisciplined or un ad hoc manner, then maybe that's the first step to actually look into how do we follow a specific branching model, uh, how do we do testing properly and then set up the continuous integration solution. Uh, so this is what you need and then finally again this is something I've mentioned but there is always uh, more and more uh, configuration management involved here. So a lot of scripts and configuration files that set how all of this works together. So where are the tests, which branch should we use, uh, what kind of steps are there, how do we build the product and all of these kind of things. So it's getting more and more complicated uh, and then you also need to keep in mind that most software products don't just have one main or master branch but you might have different versions that you need to support. Uh, these different versions might have different dependencies and so on. So this can get very complicated. Now. Let's move to continuous deployment. Additionally to integrating and having a build, we also want to deploy directly uh, and directly to the end user. And what does that mean? We, it means we don't only need automated tests, we also need, in a way, a good test suite. 
And what I mean by that is uh, a test suite that is not only good on unit testing level, but it really captures everything. I mean, you should have confidence in whatever the automated testing does is sufficient to show you whether it should be deployed. So you need to have integration tests, you need to have system tests, you maybe need some kind of automated acceptance tests that tell whether the requirements are fulfilled or not. So you are actually looking at a lot of different tests and additionally maybe things like fuzzing or penetration testing, kind of security aspects, usability aspects. So the tests on an automated level should really show you yes you can deploy or not uh, and in practice this is really difficult and this is maybe also the big milestone for companies to actually go towards continuous deployment that they don't necessarily trust this so it's very common uh, to have this sort of deploy button uh, where the developers or the managers feel we can't really trust the test suite completely we want to have the system that it gets everything ready, the binaries or whatever we have is ready, there's just a single button that I need to push manually so that at least you have the control over it, you can maybe quickly look at the test results and then uh, deploy, but there are not many companies that would deploy directly. This depends heavily uh, on your domain. Uh, then of course, we're talking about deployment, you actually need to have the option or the possibility to deploy. So if you for example think of something like Android, the Android uh, ecosystem, Android phones, you can't deploy automatically to the user, the user always has to accept it first, the user has to update the app. Uh, this is different if you for example Facebook or Google, you're pushing something to the web, as soon as you've pushed it the users get the new version. But this is not always possible. Uh, there might of course be regulations, uh, maybe you have certified your software in a certain way and whenever you have a new version you need to go through some kind of audit then you can't just deploy. So this is in practice what is also uh, limiting a lot of companies that they can actually not deploy because they uh, have different circumstances that prevent this. But nowadays, as we have a lot of web-based systems that we can just push a new version, we can definitely uh, use this uh, quite well. Now what we move into next is, assuming that we can just deploy a new version to the uh, customers, to the end users, what can we actually do with that? Uh, and that brings us to the topic of continuous experimentation next, of essentially trying out different versions, different features uh, with different parts of the users. So let's do that next.